Hey, what's up you guys, I'm Dr. Sharma. As you know, recently, the United States Medical Licensing Examination Board Committee made the USMLE Step 1 score now pass or fail. Yeah, that's right, they're getting rid of the three-digit score that was so coveted and so thought of anxiously because to some degree it mattered and it was used by program directors to rank you in terms of how well you did during medical school and on board exams and compare you to other medical students. It was also to the advantage of IMGs and DOs to take the USMLE in order to compare themselves to other US graduate MDs. And now that that's been taken away, you have to come up with other other ways to make your application stand out. If you haven't already heard the news, I have a link below in the description to my video regarding the change in my opinion about it. I think it definitely makes it harder for some of the medical students going to lower tier schools to really stand out during the application process. And well, it forces the PDs to really start to think of other ways in order to rank medical students because there are just too many applications to look through. And therefore, I wanna talk about the five ways that you can make your application stand out during residency match. Number one, what I see coming up in the foreseeable future is making the step two CK, the clinical knowledge portion of the exam required. Yeah, that's right. Step two actually wasn't a required exam the way that step one was, but now that that's the only three-digit score that programs directors can use to judge how you did on board exams and how you could potentially do in the future on your residency board exams, that exam may be higher emphasized and actually be required before you actually apply to residencies. Whereas previously you could apply to residencies and go through the ERAS without actually taking the step two and after match, have your step two score come up, especially for those of you who didn't really want to study too hard on step two CK because you had already had a pretty decent step one score. In my own experience, I had ended up taking step two CK before I actually applied to any of the programs in order for them to see both of my scores to better my application. And therefore, is one of the ways that you can make your application stand out now that step one is pass or fail. Number two is number of publications and presentations that you do during medical school. Now, I know you're probably thinking, uh, you just said number, didn't you? And yeah, like I said, with the number of medical school applications that programs directors get for some residencies, the number is going to be the first thing that they look at. For example, in some of the MRNP math statistics, it's been shown that dermatology and radiology applicants who have a higher number of publications definitely get a higher match rate. Yeah, it's kind of another way to sift through applications, but it is another way of showing dedication towards medicine and another way to show your dedication towards that specific specialty. Number three, the MSPE, or the Medical Student Performance Evaluation. This is completed by a faculty member at your medical school that you obviously talk to before they actually write it. They're gonna know exactly what your scores were, what your GPA is, how you've done during medical school, and know you at least to some degree so that they can create this sheet that's being sent off with all of your applications a couple of days after the ERAS applications were sent up. Now, of course, that faculty member is gonna to try to put you in the best light because the medical schools want their students to match. But the issue is, is that even those can kind of lack uniqueness and not really represent you fully. To be honest, I read my MSPE and I didn't really feel like it represented me entirely. But something to keep in mind to make your application stand out is to work with a faculty member even closely to try to come up with the best way to create this document. Number four is M3 grades. Yeah, that's right. I've actually heard from faculty members that the M3 grades were also used in addition to the three-digit score in order to evaluate your application. Getting past your honors and not failing your rotation is another way of showing your dedication and is absolutely critical during third year. And yeah, a lot of it might be social skills and try to get on the good side of the attending that you're working on that specific rotation and really working your butt off. But there is also the score that you get from the shelf exam on that particular rotation specialty, which will definitely take a large amount of studying if you're trying to do honors. And number five, what you were doing during your first and second year of medical school. And by this, I mean your class rank, how well you did in classes, in addition to your extracurriculars. Were you a leader? Were you a class president? Were you doing a lot of volunteer work? Were you part of that specific specialties group at your medical school? Those activities that you partake in during your first and second year of medical school are probably gonna become a lot more important this time. And for those schools that still have a graded curriculum, there's gonna be a class GPA and rank. Just unfortunately, another way that programs directors could use in order to rank their applicants. Now, do I think that's gonna be the overriding factor and the most important one? Only time will tell and it's really hard to say. But I really think if you can make these five things better, you can really make your application stand out. I'm gonna add a number six, but I feel like I'm not sure where this is gonna land, but it definitely feels important and it's your personal statement. The whole reason why you did medical school and why you did that specific specialty and being able to articulate in words in a well-written document is gonna be super important. While I previously thought the personal statement wasn't the biggest thing and you really just wanted to stay in that 95% and not be too weird or too out there with it, now I'm not so sure how that's gonna pan out, but I definitely think those are gonna be read more, assuming faculty and staff have the time to actually read them because again, there is a lot of applicants. Yeah, it's unfortunate that this kind of changed my view of how medical school is done and I'm not sure if I entirely agree with it because at the end of the day, if you're being given the power to take care of patients, being handed the responsibility of life and death, and having the power to take care of one of my family members, I would really hope that you took the time to learn your medicine and not just have to pass or fail a board exam. Because medical school is not just any graduate school. You're becoming a doctor. And out. I hope the process doesn't stress you guys out too much. Please let me know if you have any questions. Compliment and comment below. Like and subscribe because it lets me know how I'm doing. And as always, good luck.